Well, give me a couple seconds to finish, or to start the stream. Let's do it. Fantastic to see everyone. This is a, an unscheduled sort of a makeup stream. So I don't expect too many people to be here, but uh, you know. Something like this. Folks, welcome. My name is Konstantin and this is Inside Russia. I'm inviting you to uh, join me to learn a thing or two about news, recent news, what has been happening in Russia in the last two days. Quite a few things have happened, uh, obviously, because three days ago Russia experienced the biggest threat to presidential power, Putin's power uh, in hi the history of his reign in 23 years. Russia experienced the event that I compare, at, 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 uh, the magnitude of which I compare to uh, events that took place on February 24th, 2022. Basically, it was huge. And um, the news that they were coming out, I remind you, on the first day of the mutiny, I made uh, four streams, although it was only one real day, um, one full day. So, uh, and all my news, all the news coming out of Russia, they were more or less about Wagner Group, about Evgeny Prigozhin, the owner and the creator of Private Army Wagner, and about. Um, events that that were unfolding around the mutiny okay all of a sudden informational space of russia changed you know propaganda disappeared and wagner and prigozhin they have take they took the entire media space and they owned it for two days and um Basically, lots of Russian businessmen, oligarchs, lots of Russian officials, uh, senators, you know, lots of Russian uh, city bureaucrats, politicians, they flew out of Russia. They started fleeing, you know, running away like rats from Moscow. Moscow emptied out uh, by the 24th evening. Uh, that's pretty insane. Uh, everyone was expecting Wagner, Prigozhin, to actually close in on Moscow and enter Moscow and take, seize the power. Vladimir Putin, uh, Russian president, Russian prime minister, Mishustin, they fled to St. Petersburg and, oh, anyway, you know all of that. Uh, I would like to tell you a thing or two about what has followed after that, because there's been quite a few news. I would like to do uh, an analytical stream. I would like to tell you how what Wagner Group did in Russia a couple days ago has changed everything and has changed Russian future. Um, basically, Wagner is bust now, but whoever comes next has a paved road as a precedent. And trust me, we will not sit here and wait for long to see uh, another one coming, you know, to take place of Wagner. So, uh, I will talk about it later today, my second stream, and this one purely for news updates. Uh, there are important news I would like to share with you, and I, 
I doubt you will find them anywhere else. You, you've got to watch, uh, you've got to listen, you've got to see Russian media space, you know. You, to, you, you've got to follow uh, the sources of news and so forth. You know, enough talking. Without further ado, let's, let me jump into the news. First of all, uh, what is the most interesting development in my mind is what has happened to Prigozhin? And everyone is trying to answer this question, why? What made him change his mind? Basically, <clears throat> he left on the uh, 24th evening. He made a deal with whoever, Putin, whoever's behind Putin, whoever's running the show. At this point, it's hard to, to tell. There are theories about that. Most likely Vladimir Putin. He made a deal uh, and he was offered some carrots. And I don't believe that uh, they could threaten them with sticks. Most likely it was carrots. So, um, Evgeny Prigozhin did an announcement. He said, I'm turning, we were making a U-turn and we're going back. We don't want to shed any Russian blood, which is a BS explanation. You know, I'll explain you why in the stream tonight. But he got into a car and basically he left. And for two days, no one knew where Prigozhin was. Um, there were quite a few speculations. Um, I thought he was dead, but yesterday evening he refurst, resurfaced. He started uh, making statements while well, writing in his Telegram channel, uh, which is very, very uh, popular right now. Uh, recordings started appearing where he addressed everyone explaining that, uh, you know, he made a decision to withdraw from Russia and go to Belarus and so forth. So anyway, the main news I wanted to share is Prigozhin is alive. At least he was alive this morning. Okay, that's, that's important. Um, another news that is very important that concerns Vladimir Putin. Uh, Vladimir Putin is still scared from what I understand. Um, he came out of from hiding and he started taking some actions today. Oh, this isn't the usual stream, so I don't have my usual cup, but I'm drinking my usual twining tea, English breakfast, morning, afternoon, at night. That's good. So Vladimir Putin, we all remember had he made a speech uh, on 24th, he shouldn't have made it. He, he, he'd better stayed uh, off the screen because his speech was a disaster. And last night it was uh, 1 a.m. in Russia, uh, in Uzbekistan, it was, I think between 10 and 11 p.m. He uh, had a made up speech he made a made-up speech, unscheduled speech that no one had been aware of. His speech was, the second speech was pretty much the same as the first one. They lasted for five minutes, both of them. And my idea is he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have um, said anything yesterday either. Because by these moves, he showed his weakness even further. And again, I will be speaking in details about that in tonight's stream. Please come and check it out. It's called uh, Wagner's Toast, but it paved the road to others. So Vladimir Putin uh, also appeared on the TV screens today uh, in Moscow, and he was thanking the power block agency personnel. The army, FSB, I believe uh, he was speaking in front of them, you know, just a regular speech, thanking them for not letting Russia disintegrate and so forth. Uh, so the biggest news is that Vladimir Putin is, has resurfaced, so to speak, is kind of back and the moves he makes, they are very weak. Another interesting news concerns uh, Wagner Group, the soldiers. 
Over two days that Prigozhin was missing, Wagner soldiers started asking questions. Uh, first of all, not too many understood why they moved on to Moscow, okay, and um, when they were at the hands reach from, from Moscow, they turned away, okay. He did not explain, at least it is my understanding, he did not explain anything to his own soldiers, and they got upset. They got very upset. They also got upset about um, planes that have been shot down. As if you didn't know, there are 12 or 13 pilots have been killed by Wagner. And uh, some of the aircraft, they, weren't, uh, they were not even attacking Wagner Group, but the Wagner shot them down. And Wagner soldiers are upset about that too, because they're saying, hey, they weren't attacking us, they're just soldiers as us, and so forth. So Wagner um, group as a military organization has been cracked. And I think that's uh, part of the plan that Russian government has. Another important news is the criminal investigation against Evgeny Prigozhin. Um, he He was announced by FSB, okay, the first official news that, that broke out in Russia when he started his crusade onto Moscow. Uh, FSB announced that it charged Prigozhin with mutiny, that's Article 279 of Criminal Code of Russian Federation, and it opened a criminal investigation. That's basically uh, a death mark. Then Vladimir Putin came out the next day in the afternoon and he also said that whoever is uh, turning against Russian state is the traitor and the enemy. But he did not name uh, Prigozhin's name. Uh, he didn't name him by name. But, I mean, everyone understood it, it's all clear. But again, that's weakness that Putin has, you know, he doesn't, he's afraid to name people names. Anyway. Uh, so, um, there was a criminal investigation underway, solidified after Putin's speech, because Putin made it basically official. He said, Prigozhin is the traitor, Prigozhin is the enemy, Prigozhin is working for the West, trying to break up Russia, you know, Russia surrounded by the enemies and so forth. And then a few hours later, when the deal was done and Prigozhin announced that he was turning around and sending the troops home, so to speak, into the field camps. Uh, all of a sudden, Dmitry Peskov said that no more criminal investigation. It's been thrown out. The charges were dropped. And wait a second. There are 12 or 13. The number is still unclear. But let's say that's 12 dead bodies. Okay. Uh, and the criminal investigation is closed. Well, we, how are you going to find those who killed Russian soldiers on duty, Russian pilots? So lots of questions have been um, were asked about that. So at first they opened a criminal investigation charge Prigozhin. Then the next day they dropped the charge. They closed the case, and that's official. Dmitry Peskov says that the Telegram news channels, you know, Prigozhin is not wanted anymore. He's a hero again. But then, yesterday, a day after, another news surfaces that, wait a second, who told you that Prigozhin, Prigozhin's charge was dropped? No, it wasn't. And we were like, <laughs> wait a second, you know, are you sure it's happening? First, they, you know, charge him. They, they drop charges officially. Then they say, well, we haven't dropped them. Well, you said it yesterday. Well, you know. You know how things work in Russia, but in reality, the rumors have it, it's, he's still being investigated, okay? Prigozhin himself, another news, he resurfaced in Belarus. He's between uh, Rostov and Belarus, well, not Rostov, but um, the, the closest airport where his troops are stationed. He has his own plane and he flies. The latest, his plane landed in Belarus, and the latest news there are camps for 5,000 Chevaka Wagner uh, combatants are being built in Belarus. 
5,000 is not 25,000, the entire number of Chivaka Wagner soldiers, so that's one fifth. Um, as far as I understand, they, uh, the rest of Chivaka Wagner are still camped in the fields in um, central Russia. Okay, that, that's that news. Um, Russian government officials, politicians, propaganda, they bit their tongues as soon as Prigozhin declared he was moving on to Rostov. And I told you in all four streams, there was informational vacuum. There was nothing said about by anyone. Um, they just hid, ran away and hid in the bushes, okay? Senators, propaganda people, TV people, you know? And the lady who was making announcement, the anchor, news anchor, like two in the morning, she was reading about the surprising, and that's the only news I got from official um, Russian television. And she was shaking at the time. She, she was confused. She didn't know what, you know, you could see it in her eyes. Go ahead and watch it. That's, that was crazy. Well, <clears throat> Wagner made a U-turn. Evgeny Prigozhin uh, made a deal. He said, I don't threat Putin anymore. You know, uh, I was never gonna threat them. He clearly lied because he did threat them. He, he announced that he was going to Moscow to take the power, topple the president. Now he says, well, I never that. I never thought of doing that, you know. All fakes, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and guess what happens? Propaganda people, oh my gosh. They have come out and they are doubling down their efforts to do what? Of course, to make up for what they did a few days ago. To show that they are such patriots, they are such fearless, that it's absolutely incredible. Russian uh, politicians in the Russian parliament, oh my gosh, they come out and every single one has something to say. Oh, well, you know... We always, we always knew that we would be victorious. We always, we never considered him a threat. He was just a big bug. Yeah, that guy was Russia's talk of the day. Big bug. He was moving on to Moscow, and Putin was clearly shaken and scared. So anyway, um, I'd like to read you a few, a few news, and I'd like to move on to uh, open a live stream chat and answer your questions if you have any. I intend on making a stream about one year long today, so I started around 8, uh, 6.30 p.m. my time. So I'll finish it at 6, 8, 7.30 p.m. in about 40 minutes, right? Yeah, 40 minutes. So interesting news. I made a community post about that, but this is just the, <laughs> the day of funny news, I kid you not. Uh, Rostov, just three days ago, was cheering Wagner troops, was cheering Prigozhin. Well, that's a big question, questionable action, but it happened. You know, uh, they were singing, they were dancing, they were following Wagner when they were leaving Rostov. And they were, uh, you know, chanting, go get Putin, you know, go get Moscow, things like that. A huge number of Rostovites came up. And then just three days later, this fella, his name is, uh, his name is, his name is Sergei Markov, okay? He um, is saying he's a director of Institute of Political Research of Russia. And he is saying that um, after the events that took place in Rostov and Don, uh, approval rating of Vladimir Putin has surged to 90%. 90. Yeah, a huge part of Rostov came out and were just rioting. When the cops started moving in, I remind you, the cops had run away when they saw Wagner moving into Rostov and they were hiding. <laughs> After Wagner left, as Wagner was leaving, cops were coming back and Russians were not happy. I have videos as they were trying to uh, break their cars up and things like that, so, you know, chanting not very nice things about cops and for a good reason. And miraculously, three days, approval rating has surged to 90%.
Okay. Um, then an amazing and funny news came out from Rosguardia State Police head. Uh, his last name is Zolotov. He said, I quote, we knew that we will would be victorious. The uh, rioters would never take Moscow. I mean, where were you three days ago? Why weren't you saying anything public? Why you were being quiet? And where were you, Rosguardia? Nowhere to be found. Rosguardia is present in all the provinces, in Rostov, in Voronezh, in Lipetsk, and Rosguardia was supposed to be slowing down and fighting CVK Wagner. As Putin said, the traitors and enemies, they were moving on to Moscow. Enemies inside Russia moving on to Moscow. And where is Rosguardia? Nowhere to be found. Hey, no big deal. They didn't engage because they knew that they would be victorious. They knew that the rioters would never take Moscow. Knowledge, my friends, is power. Okie dokie. Let's get you something interesting. An amazing news, fresh news, fresh of the boat, so to speak. Vladimir Putin came out and said that um, Cheveka Wagner, as it turns out, was financed by the Russian government. I repeat, the private army created by Putin's cook Prigozhin, a former cook, uh, was financed by the Russian government, by the taxpayers. I, I heard that and I was like, well, okay, I kind of knew that. But I was like, wait a second. Don't Russian people understand that Putin is telling it to them, okay? No one is asking Putin, wait a second, it's my money, taxpayers' money, I pay taxes. And I finance these criminals who are out of prisons, who do a mutiny. Well, wait a second, wait. something wrong in this picture. But you know what? Russia is a really miraculous land because no one is asking questions. I think I'm the only one who is asking this question. Why taxpayers' money were financing Chevaka Wagner? How, you know how much money were spent from uh, February, to March 22 to pretty much yesterday? On Chivika Wagner, 86 billion rubles. That is over one billion dollars. <laughs> Out of my pocket, folks. Out of my pocket. Well, not just mine, but you know, all of Russians. And no one is asking questions. This is insane. Okay, there are news coming out that um, KGB, FSB, has finally, for the second time, tossed the criminal case out into a trash bin against uh, Evgeny Prigozhin. Um, I will clarify this information tonight because things might change. They say, oh, we closed the investigation and three hours later they come out and say, well, you know what, disregard what we said three hours ago. We keep it open, you know. Later, they come out and, well, this people are like that. These people are like that. I'm telling you. Okay. Um, more interesting news. There was a fight between FSB, KGB, and Chevika Wagner on the border of Russia. Believe it or not. Well, I believe it. Um, this morning, oh, I'm sorry, folks, that's not this morning, that's old news, 24th, disregard, okay, moving on, um, I would like to pay your attention to one of the things that not too many Russians, again, pay attention to. There was a law created in Russia a couple months ago. The law was supposed to give immunity to Chivaka private army personnel, uh, private army's personnel, uh, and whoever 
a, if anyone would accuse private army soldiers of anything, it would be considered as fakes and spreading disinformation. So the private armies were equal to Russian army, okay? So you could get up to 15 years in prison for saying, oh, Chivaka Wagner did this and that. So wait a second, fakes and disinformation. And um, two months later, three months later, the mutiny happened. So in by Russian law, if I say, for example, oh, you know what, Chivaka Wagner was moving on to Moscow and shot down a few planes. Uh, Putin announced Chivaka Wagner as enemies and, and traitors, okay? But according to Russian law, he spread disinformation and fakes, and he can't be held responsible for that. That's the same law he created earlier. Okay, moving on. This is an alarming news. They're uh, peddling the news on nuclear nuclear weapons moving to Belarus. Alexander Lukashenko, that's the first time I hear something from Lukashenko, the Belarusian dictator, oh, I'm sorry, president, um, about nuclear weapons. Usually it came from Vladimir Putin or you know Russian politicians, but it's the first time that Lukashenko says that, oh, the majority, the biggest part of the planned nuclear weapon has already been moved to Belarus. Uh, okay. We're going to remember that. Breaking news. Lukashenko, the Russian dictator, uh, you Belarusian dictator, oh, I'm sorry, Belarusian president, just announced a few minutes ago that, uh, six minutes ago, that Prigozhin has landed to Belarus and he's welcoming Prigozhin. Now, again, I think that that is a transit point for uh, Prigozhin. I think uh, Wagner is toast. Wagner is going to be disbanded very, very soon. And Prigozhin is not going to get what he was promised when making the deal with uh, thieves. Okay, so... Um, but he's in Belarus right now. There's the biggest news I'm personally waiting is Shoigu getting fired. And I think it will happen. Uh, instead, Vladimir Putin there were a few seconds on TV uh, showed where Putin was, was talking to Shoigu or something like that. By the way, another interesting news is Shoigu appeared on television yesterday because before yesterday no one had known where Shoigu was for two days, okay? And the rumors were that he's, he was arrested under house arrest or, or in prison or whatever, we don't know that. But they showed video of him um, visiting the front lines and you know what <laughs> this is so funny because the video was shot on friday day before or well, the day when uh, wagner group started uh, the mutiny right before they did the mutiny they filmed shoigu and now they are showing it yesterday as if he uh, you know he visited the front lines yesterday so another lie by russian government uh, quite a few people recognized the lie and it's been out okay but i still believe that shrug was gonna get fired and boy he's gonna be blamed for everything he's going to be uh he's gonna be made the scapegoat Vladimir Putin, besides uh, telling all the Russians that they had just spent 86 billion rubles um, to maintain Chevika Wagner in the last 18 months, he also added that um, 110 billion rubles had been paid to the combatants and their families, means the combatants who died, uh, I don't know, how should I call them, the criminals? The thieves, the murderers, the rapists, child molesters. So, 110 billion rubles on top of 86 billion 
were spent on to support uh, the families. So that's add 1.3 billion dollars. And uh, out of 86 billion rubles, 80 billion rubles went into the pocket of Evgeny Prigozhin himself. So he spent 6 billion to maintain uh, Chevaka Wagner and 80 billion just pocketed. Nice. Um, I don't believe Putin, but the numbers he's given, they're just absolutely amazing. Okay, folks, uh, it's been it's been about 30 minutes. Let me open the live stream chat and I will answer questions gladly. Um, so hang on. If you want to know more of anything, please let me know in the comments and put them in caps. And put inside Russia after that sign so they appear in highlighted in large orange box. Thank you so very much. Again, the reason why I'm uh, making two streams today, I think that one stream cannot cover all the news. There are too many. There's just like an avalanche of information coming out of everywhere in Russia. So howdy friends, uh, glad to see about 6,000 people. Uh, that's great considering this isn't the usual time for the stream. Uh, everyone is welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Mods, thank you for coming uh, extra time and supporting me. Thank you, Mommy, Lorna, Bob S, Amir, uh, Blackhead, Harry, um, Cecilio. I think you're using the wrong mic audio sound off. You gotta be kidding me. Shoot. Isn't this fantastic? Hold on one second. Don't you love when it happens, you know, I'm sitting there and speaking and speaking and speaking and the mic, the main mic is off. Well, thank goodness there was some sound. Artistic Wolf, howdy. Howdy, everyone. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Danny, if the oligarchs were set to off left Moscow, they have returned or was that propaganda as well? No, 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 they left. It wasn't propaganda, hang on. They left, they left. That's, that's, I guarantee you, because it's really easy to see who flies out of Moscow, out of Russia, because the planes, they have transporters. This little devices that locate the planes, if you know what I mean. Um, so there are services that they actually, you know, uh, monitor planes of certain people. And most oligarchs flew. The heck is going on? Most oligarchs flew out, out of Moscow. Another news. Um, top Russian parliament politicians are trying to score points to make up for the you know, embarrassment and betrayal that they committed a couple days ago. And Russia's uh, parliament speaker, Valodin, has just announced a measure to 
monitor who left Moscow, what oligarchs and what bureaucrats, what government officials on Saturday and prosecute them. It's not clear what kind of prosecution. It's not clear. There's no law for, to, there's nothing, no basis to prosecute these people. But that came from Volodin. It's official. And it came two hours ago. So there you have it. Uh, thank you so much, Stefan Batist. Thank you. Is it likely Prigozhin is going to switch to Ukrainian side? Since now, basically, is the enemy of Russia. Uh, everything about Prigozhin is really difficult to explain because of one simple thing. We don't know the whole truth. No one does at this point. Only most likely people who are involved in the negotiation. That's Prigozhin, that's Dumin, that's Putin. Lukashenko, he's blowing his participation out of proportion. I don't think he played a very important role. I think Dumin did. And Putin perhaps did, and Prigozhin did, but they used you, Lukashenko as the name and a small tool, and that's it. Okay, and Lukashenko is just um, making making himself look important, making himself look like a key person of this political process. You know, um, he's getting political points, no more, no less. You know, so it's really hard to say what was offered what kind of carrots to Prigozhin, so he did a U-turn when he could have taken the power in Russia. That's one thing. Uh, another thing I don't understand is that how he can trust the word of Putin or people who gave him the word. It's clearly a bunch of thieves, no good liars, and it's clearly uh, a huge... Prigozhin and his Cheveka Wagner is a huge, biggest threat that exists in Russia, the threat to Putin and his power. Moreover, the threats that's been in the works once already, okay, and I don't understand how Prigozhin don't understand that he's a dead man walking. They're gonna get rid of him, you know. Whoever they prom whatever they promised him, mean, you cannot trust these guys. So uh, I don't think he's gonna join Ukraine, but let's wait and see. But I don't think so. Andrew Marshall, thank you for becoming a higher tier sponsor. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. James Elliott, thank you for your support. Thank you. Now, there was a question. Tell us about uh, else, please. <laughs> Thanks for the updates. I'm sorry. Probably going to get rid of this, um, of this um, translation, close it afterwards, because... Was, I was talking with no good audio, you know. Rice Minister, howdy. Thank you so much. Zurich in the house. Thank you. Where is Gerasimov? Could he have been on the command plane shot down by Wagner? I don't think so. Uh, the rumors have it that both Gerasimov and Shoigu were in Rostov when... Um, Wagner started moving on to Rostov. They, they picked Rostov as a target because it has um, Russian Southern uh, Command HQ. And both Gerasimov and Shoigu were inside. So as soon as both generals heard that Wagner was approaching, they fled like cowards. cowards. And um, no one knows where Shoigu went, but the rumors have it that Gerasimov was hiding in one of the apartments in his Rostov's, uh, at his friend's apartment, uh, who live in Rostov and Don. Again, I cannot confirm it, rumors, but as we say in Russian, in Russia, there's never smoke without fire. Okay, and Gerasimov is not that important of a character. Shoigu is, but not Gerasimov. Gerasimov is definitely going to be made a scrapegoat. Tell us about uh, Sapoirica. Sapoirica. What's a Sapoirica plant mines? If you're talking about Zaporozhye, I have nothing to say because I don't know. I don't know. There are rumors that the Russian army has uh, planted mines all over. Whether it's true or not, I don't know.
there's an issue with the stream. Not mod's fault, my fault. I'm trying a little different setup. I, I, instead of a usual gimbal, instead of usual tripod, I bought this little holder for the telephone and I'm putting it on top of the computer. And it's a new setup, so I kind of forgot to uh, connect this mic, but it's on now. Karano, should we be, should we be worried about the nukes are in Belarus and so is Prigozhin now who wants to use them? Could this be a ploy for them to be used and Putin could deny responsibility? No, no, that is... The chances of this happening are close to zero, okay? Nukes are out of the picture with Prigozhin. Prigozhin is a personal enemy of Putin right now. Prigozhin is uh, his creature, creation. Uh, son who went against father, who tried to get the most sacred thing that Putin has, his power, and Prigozhin was taking that, uh, well, aiming at taking that. And trust me, Prigozhin is a dead man walking. You shouldn't be worried about him. J.R. Stoner, thank you so much. Uh, I wonder if Prigozhin and Shuigo will be offered some of the sweet polonium tea anytime soon. No, they're not going to bother with polonium tea. They're just going to gonna shoot them or, you know, they're going to disappear or something. Forget about polonium tea. Christian Patterson, Christer Patterson, thank you for your support. Uh, 5,000 Wagner soldat, and if they turn on Lukashenko, they can take control of Belarus. Uh, good question. But I think that Lukashenko is uh, not that stupid. I think there are there is a system of checks and balances against Wagner Group. Otherwise, he wouldn't let Wagner inside his own country. Okay, um, so there's a different plan. It's not to take over Belarus. It's different. I don't know what the plan is. Hang on one second. That was a problem with the sound again. Sorry about that. Uh, William Ahrens. Thank you. Is there not still a big role in the Russian front line since Wagner forces have left their positions? Can the Russian army ever trust them again? First of all, I don't think that Wagner army troops, Wagner troops forces will be ever the front lines ever again. I don't think that they're going to be the Wagner group for a long time. I think the group will be uh, partitioned, so to speak you know, broken down to smaller pieces and the criminals probably would go, will go back into prisons because they committed incredibly huge crime against Putin. They took a shot at his power, okay? They could have cursed him. He, they could have insulted him. He could have, they could have, I don't know, stolen from him. No big deal. But they tried to take his power away from him. They're not going to live for a long time. So I wouldn't be worried about that. William, Dream Steam, thank you. If you make God bleed, the people do not believe him anymore. And if there's one, once blood in the water, the sharks will come soon. Thank you. I already saw the statement. I think it was by you in the comments. Um, I can't disagree with you, you know. Peter Bowden, keep up the good work. One day you will walk in Russia sun again. Mm. I don't know. That's not my intention. Thank you for your support, though. Micah. Strange thing I noticed. Prigozhin looked suspiciously grim and somber when he left. Like someone said, I'm trying not to show it despite all the cheering. You're right. You're right. Um, I wish we knew the deal. I wish we knew what was offered to him. But... Um, He's a dead man walking. He knows that. Darla, 
We'll have to rewind later, but did you cover Wagner boss using Belarus as an attack point? No, I did not. I don't know whether it's true or not. Um, the only reason I can think of, he was offered um, salvation. He was offered full forgiveness if he attacked Belarus, if he attacked Ukraine from Belarus. But it's, I talked to some experts today, and they, it's 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 useless. It would be a suicide because uh, that part of the border is incredibly fortified by Belarus. And uh, if five mayor, 5,000 Wagner, um, you know, forces, troops try to break into uh, Ukraine, then they're going to be dead very soon. Perhaps that's the plan. Okay. Um, checking if I s missed any super chats. There you go, Eileen. It was reported on an Al Jazeera yesterday that there were rumors today that Dumin will replace Shoigu as defense minister. You were spot on with your prediction when none else had ever mentioned Dumin. Eileen, uh, I'll tell you a secret. I noticed Dumin back in 2017. I had a gut feeling that Dumin was going to replace, was being prepared to replace Putin back then, 2017. Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk much about what had brought me to that decision, to that feeling, but that's the truth. And I've said it publicly, not on YouTube, but among my friends and they still remember our talk, you know, and they're quite amazed. Um, I'm still standing behind my opinion on Dumin. I think he's will become one of the key points, uh, key, key personas in this new Russia that is f being formed or will, will form. Uh, <laughs> Petros, howdy, howdy, Chizhevsky. Constantine, you're not listening to Chizhevsky Chij ghost. I warned you about the return to the end of World War One, and I told you that Prigozhin wouldn't make a coup. And I know how Putin blackmailed him. I didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you please explain that? Return to the end of World War One, and I told you that Prigozhin wouldn't make a coup. Well, but he did. And I know how Putin blackmailed him. He blackmailed Putin. He threatened Putin, not not the wise, not not the other way around. Okay, so no super chats missed. Um, Vernon showers. Thank you. Prigozhin will defeat Ukraine for Putin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the joke. JRG projects. Thank you. My impression is that Belarus knows Russia is falling apart and letting Wagner in. Could be a sign of Belarus is trying to separate itself from Putin. It's a possibility. Not very probable, but it's a possibility. When Russia goes, Belarus will be dragged down with it. Um, if you to say Belarus, you should... You should um, separate Belarus and Belarusian dictator. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. The president, Lukashenko. Lukashenko is definitely going to go down. Belarus will not. Belarus will break free and it will be a part of Europe. Um, that's what I think about the future of Belarus. Uh, no name. Thank you. Why do Shoigu and Gerasimov look so incredibly incompetent every single time they're on camera? It's shocking how consistent it is because they are simply incompetent. Shoigu is not even a professional military. He was a builder, a constructor, a co contractor. Anyway, he was building um, factories, <laughs> if we call it civic construction, civil construction. Um, 
my friends from my previous job knew Shoigu personally worked with him back in early 80s in Sayanagorsk when he was working at the Sayanagorsk aluminum smelter plant. And uh, he's not, he was just made the Minister of Defense and he was stealing left and right. And he doesn't know a zilch about, about uh, military. He didn't go to academy. He just, <laughs> that's a joke. And Gerasimov, I guess also a joke. JJN, thank you, was a PR campaign, so Prigozhin can set up his own hot dog brand in the United States. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Can't wait for the Gleisless. Gleises, Gleises, what's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna be very successful, the hot dog stands up. <laughs> Pietros, it's very simple, FSB found the close relative of the most important Wagner officers and threatened to kill them. This forced Wagner to back down. Then Putin and Prigozhin compromised. No Dumin. Uh, I disagree with that. And this is why. If you try to plan to execute a mutiny or attempt it of coup or something like that, and when it gets very serious, then you think of your family, your loved ones before, way before. And you secure them, okay? Um, you can't trust anyone, so I would assume that they all had families somewhere hid by them, uh, or by them, not hidden, but with them, by them, I don't know. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that all these people have secured their families, including Prigozhin. So I have heard this theory before about children, or oh, children and wives of Prigozhin, by the way, a friend of mine in St. Petersburg, his son, one of his sons, attended high school with Prigozhin's daughter. Uh, so I don't think it was the case. Uh, no Dumin. If there was any kind of negotiation, obviously it was, then Dumin did take a part of it. Because Dumin was the one who went out and actually met Prigozhin face to face. Okay, uh, they weren't any telephone calls. They're they're saying there was telephone call with Lukashenko. Uh, perhaps there was one, but it was more of a formality. The negotiations was done uh, with Dumin, with help of Dumin, one way or another. This is my stand. Again, this is my opinion. Please allow me to have it. Time will tell anyway if I'm right or wrong. Nai Nai Kai Aita, thank you so much for sponsoring five people. Thank you, appreciate it. Justice Pathos, um, how have the Russians reacted to Prigozhin truce? Shoigu, extra star. Ukrainian asset buffet for the Russian oligarchs and war death rate three, four times hijacked. No denazi or demilitarization. Um, there are two kind of mysteries for me. One mis one kind of mystery is, is um, solvable. The, the mysteries that can be solved. They are everything concerns with power, with actions of Putin, with the war and so forth. I understand the motives that drive people. I understand people's interests. Okay, I understand. That's very basic. It's very primitive. But you know what? I don't understand the second kind of mysteries that that they are connected with Russian people. What has happened in the last four days now is the Russian people have been shown openly that no one cares about them whatsoever. Uh, the government says a lot, but when it you know it talks the talk, but it does not walk the walk. As soon as the threat. To the government employees, you know, to basically to the city of Rostov and Don appeared. The government that had to protect Russian residents of uh, Rostov just fled, ran away. Okay, and um, 
Russian people were telling one, were, were being told one thing, and the next day they were told completely different thing. Okay, they, they it's just, I don't understand how they're e e swallowing and biting it uh, and eating it. I don't understand how they're buying it. This is a huge, this is a huge, huge mystery for me. And I cannot solve it at this, at least at this point. So uh, no denazification, no demilitarization. Well, come on. Prigozhin for the entire country openly said, come on, there was no intention to denazify Russia, to demilitarize Russia. You've got to be stupid to believe that. He told it to Russian people. And uh, a lot of them had supported Prigozhin. So that's their hero was telling them. And they still buying it. They still buying this demilitarization, denazification. So that's a mystery. Um, thank you so much, no name, no disrespect to Prigozhin, but his daughter looks like him 40 years ago with this stingy, blonde mop head. No comment on that, I haven't seen her. Um, Carlo Herman, howdy, good nubbend. Why forgive Prigozhin and not let people who are in prison for 15 years after simply opposing the war? Well, because you are asking me you know, you're German, right? Uh, you're asking me a question that makes sense. Russian government is not about making sense. Russian government is about uh, caring for its safety and security. That's all. Um, this is exactly why they do it. They, they throw people because they can, they have enough power, and they pardon Prigozhin because they cannot punish him. Okay, at least at that point when they were pardoning them. Plain and simple. Talk. Uh, Geoff Newport, what are we going to do with all the Putin body doubles? Pff, do whatever you like. German rep selection, good knobend. Danke schon. Mods, sorry for uh, some foreign language slipping out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, Marcel, one... one Dikras, what a weird storm in a teacup. I'm confused by this coup. Um, please come back in a few hours. I will be making a live stream. I'll be doing a live stream about... Um, I'll be digging deeper of why it was not a, a, a small storm in a teacup. It was much bigger than that. True. Would you have ever thought that Prigozhin would do that and that and that? Russian, Russia's defense is so weak today. Some time ago, I was sure and I thought, um, before Prigozhin did what he did, I thought that he could do that and I thought he would make a move one day, one way or another. I didn't know it would happen so fast. Go and watch my two streams. First is called uh, Seven Reasons Why I Think That the Civil War Will Happen in Russia. Second is um, The Civil War Has Begun. You will find lots of information in those streams in my stand on whether I thought that Prigozhin would do something like that or not. Um, I didn't know that he would do it so fast. And I did not expect him to take Rostov so easily. <laughs> I thought that the Russian army would put up a fight. I didn't expect him to move to Moscow so easily and so fast. I didn't expect him to be able to take Moscow. That was a surprise to me. And then, of course, when I thought that he would, he turned away. That's another... What's well, not a real mystery. I mean, you can... You can guess what what was behind that decision, but uh, I certainly did not expect that. Mario, super. Thank you so much. You are indeed super. And uh, no name. Do you think Russia will ever try to gain more Ukraine territory in the future? No. <laughs> oh, no. 
Seems like Wagner was their only hope. I don't see how they can. First of all, uh, Wagner was turned out to be the best army. Russian army is number two in Russia. At first, we believed that Russian number Russian army was number two in the world. Then later, we believed that Russian army was number two in Ukraine, and now we know that Russian army is number two in Russia. It will not take any land. Uh, the focus has been placed to inside Russia, from outside Russia, from Ukraine. Um, the fight is on. The civil war has begun. Okay, is if you haven't noticed, watch my stream tonight. I'll explain what I mean. Um, the precedent has been set. More Prigozhins will follow. Not Prigozhin, but others will follow. Uh, so, um, I don't think Ukraine will need to worry about more Russian Russians gaining more more Ukrainian territory. LMVG, thank you so much for gifting 20 people sponsorships. I appreciate that very much. And 20 people appreciate that too. Thank you. Lori Hill, howdy. Good to see you. Do you think pardon came as easy as way out? Pardon came as an easy way out. He is hard to catch. Where as a civilian not able to fight back as easily to make an example of. Arrest him or kill him and you make him a martyr. Um... Well, I still, I still uh, think that he's the, um, what you call him? He's um, dead man walking. Um, I think he's gonna be expo uh, disposed of one way or another. Um, pardon came. I think his pardon is a lie. Okay, they lied him so much. They lied him anything he wanted to, so they could save their butts. That's what I think. And um, we'll see. We'll see very soon. Uh, it's still going on. It hasn't ended, you know. As long as Wagner exists, as long as Prigozhin exists, this 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 um, um, mutiny has not ended. Pital H M, welcome to Inside Russia. Fantastic to see you. Um, Ferrari guy, how many residents of Rostov and Don knew about Prigozhin's sledgehammer tactics? Yet still could stomach treating him like a hero. Ferrari guy, um, I'm actually ashamed um, of being the same citizenship, same origins with these people because I think. Many knew, many. I think majority knew. I think they knew what he did. They knew what he would, was. They knew where he coming. He was coming from. They knew that uh, Chevka Wagner that captured Rostov and kicked out all the military and Russian officials. They knew that those were criminals, pardoned, serving time. And yet he was treated as a hero. Yes. Um. Defense rest this case. I don't know what to say. He's a scum of the scum in my eyes. True. Would you have any thought? Okay, I answered that. <laughs> if Prigozhin was in Minsk, he'd be Minsk meat by now. <laughs> hey, Dave Strain, that's a good joke. Lori Hill, I agree. He's a dead man walking. He will fall out of the window or eat poison mushroom. Well, he will simply die in his sleep or something. Like that. Or he will be in a fatal accident or, you know. Well, he'll just disappear. But pardon ended this siege. Seize, siege, I think. Hence, I said, easy way out. Okay, I understand now. Thank you, Lori. That was something about Poland. Brad Water, isn't Belarus going to have elections in the recent future? <laughs> no, they had elections a couple of years ago. Elections is not a big deal in Belarus and Russia. It's nothing to worry about, you know, for for the dictator. Oh, I'm sorry, the presidents, of course. Uh, 
Um, I completely disagree. I completely disagree um, that Wagner is going to be fighting. Wagner is about money, as it turned out. Prigozhin pocketed 80 billion rubles over 18 months, okay? Is Lukashenko going to pay him? I don't think so. Mario Super, thank you. How do you think uh, How do you think the general ordinary Russian citizen perceived Putin's last TV speech after he attempted coup? Do you think people believed what he said, that the country stands behind him? Well, how... How can you believe this thing if you were in Rostov and you were on the street and you saw tons of people around you, if you're an ordinary citizen? How do you believe that if you saw how he was moving, the Wagner and uh, Prigozhin were moving to, towards Moscow, greeted by the military? How could you believe Putin? That's another piece of propaganda, brainwashing. Petros, how do you again? Putin tried to pull uh, a knight of the long knives on Prigozhin because he withdrew from battlefield after Bakhmut, but he failed to stab him. No insider like Prigozhin shall bring down Putin. Okay, point taken. Thank you. I value your opinion. Could he have stolen nukes in Varunish 45? No, he wasn't after nukes. If was, if if he if he stole nukes, he'd be an international wanted criminal. He'd be taking care of a NATO by now. Sky fan, thank you. Do you have any contact in fucking reach you? Yes, you you can. Uh, there's a email. Drop me a line. I am going. I had been busy. I've been pretty busy. Been tied up. I haven't answered any emails in three days. So uh, please um, give me a day, and I'll try to catch with everything. Although it's really difficult. Time's up. Says Nightbot. Okie dokie. No problem. This community has become family. Thank you, Amir. I think it's. Uh, I I agree with you. Let's take a couple, couple questions. <laughs> Interesting. Andrew, you deleted your own message. Just Terry, thank you so much. Golden Griffon, howdy, howdy. What's up? How are you? Long time no see, definitely. It's great to see you. One of the first subscribers and supporters of the channel, viewers. Will P, uh, uh, PMCs remain accepted in Russia? There's been, uh, there have been quite a few public um, speeches by the officials, high-ranked officials saying, oh, we shouldn't have private armies. No, you know. Seven days ago, you were chilling, che cheering Cheveka Wagner for killing Ukrainians, and now you say, "Oh, we don't need ch your private armies anymore." You know, it's Russian hypocrisy for you. Okay, dokie. What do you think will happen now? The private armies—they have started uh, drawing up a law that will either forbid them and make them part of a Russian army. Uh, good luck with that. Okay, folks, I think I'm going to wrap it up uh, for today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Oh, we have s how many people? Uh, 6,000 almost. Thank you for coming. Please... I tried to give you news. I've tried to give you a general idea of what's what's happened in the last couple of days. But in a few hours, I'm going to be coming up with um, analytical material of why I think that private army Wagner is a toast. And I'm going to give you facts and my opinions and why I think it's just the beginning. Thank you so much. couple super chats. Manuel Fernandez. 
Howdy. What is Rosguardia exactly? That's um, SWAT. Only huge numbers. Um, Praetorian Guard. Well, no. Praetorian Guard is Secret Service. FSO. Uh, Rosguardia is... It's like a mix of state police and SWAT. Something like that. From It's private army by the guy who controls it. And he's former bodyguard of Putin. Okay, so that's Putin's private army, Rosguardia. But it's lightly armored. It doesn't have like tanks or heavy equipment. It's against people on the streets who don't have guns. Okay, not against private army Wagner. From outside, it looks like Liberty Suppression Corps. Exactly. But useless against serious threats. Exactly. That's exactly what I said. Thank you. Okay, folks, again, thank you so very much. Um, thank you. You're awesome and you rock. Um, not going to pray right now. We will pray in a few hours. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you soon for um, a deeper investigation on what has happened and why <laughs> it's going to change Russian history very soon. Thank you. You are absolutely awesome again and you rock, folks. Thank you. Uh, I will see you soon. Oh, before I go, <laughs> I would like uh, all of you to say out loud with me, as usual, Carthago de Lenda Est.